Today is, you know, the Lord is like um, you saying that um, for whatever reason, this I've been having a very long work day, and keeps my strength. That's all I can say. So I just want to thank Him because uh, He's the sustainer. Amen. And um, even if my emotions are all, you know, everywhere, I just come to Him and. I see his sustenance. I see how he's just healing. Just by being here also, it's just a healing. I mean, just in a corporate environment, that's what I mean. But I just, so I'm just saying thank you because I really, um, I'm a recipient and I am receiving his sustenance this, these days. And I, I just want to come and thank you. Amen. Amen. Um, Thanksgiving, Christine. For what the Lord has been doing, I want to also honor my prayer partners here. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, she said, How do you know that? Uh, something in crime? Uh -huh. Partners in crime. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Because when something, we don't like something when we go to a park, the thing changes. Hallelujah. <laughs> so I want to thank the Lord for you and your um, dedication to prayer and your heart um, of service and all of that and more. Amen. The Lord will repay you. Thank you for bearing with my crazy we hours of the night. <laughs> um, I thank the Lord because he's, um, he's sustaining me as well, taking Amen. the word from her. But this season is a season of um, just trusting him and learning because he's giving me nuggets of stuff and I have to pay attention to learn. So I want to thank him for what he's doing. Amen. 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 I don't I don't know and I don't think so. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I have testimony also from the ministry. That I thank God that God has allowed us to do the period of COVID. We did not lack. Amen. Amen. Actually, I was very surprised. I shared with Reverend D. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. 
your glory. Amen. Come then. Oh, we were able to survive, and I was um I was not fearful because I know when God decides something we do. When he asks us to go online, Zoom, uh, we were like, okay, how do we do that? But we were able to handle it. Actually, we handled it better than a lot of church because I have a lot of men of God who say they couldn't, people will not come when they call for Zoom. So we thank God that it was sustained. A lot of people joined, a lot of people were trained, a lot of people were retained even. So it was it was good, and we were um, able to do the deliverance while waiting of many people, talk to minister to so many people. So I thank God for that. And we released some of them. Amen. Yeah, that amen. start already ministry. Uh, my brother started, he's with uh, Brother Christian. They have a group now in Germany, um, Germany, England, and some of Cameroon. Wow. And they do three days a week. Amen. They do Zoom also. Wow. So God is good. Hallelujah. Amen. So I thank God for that. And I thank God for finance because we did not lack. Amen. Amen. Actually, we were, uh, um, we were blessed in such a way that we were able to bless the widow ministry. We were able to bless also this morning. Uh, the, the orphanage of Dakuma asked for a farm, a small farm with pigs and poultry we were able to send. Wow. Uh -huh. So now we just need the widow of uh, Duwala, but I will take care of it in Jesus' name Amen. because I commit to it. Amen. Amen. So I really thank you. I really, really want to thank everybody donating. We received donation from England, we received from in France, sometimes we receive it, it's coming from influence, Amen. and we thank God for that. Amen. So, we thank God because you know, people are just watching, they can just do like YouTube, watch and close, but they watch, they look what we, we are doing, and they say, Okay, let me do my part. So, we thank all of you who donate, who are donating. Amen. 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 Okay. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, I want to thank God. Um, I don't want to say Corona, but um, I just want to thank him because I had a a court case issued the other day, the last year, and um, they put me. I had to do community service, and I was saying, oh, I'll do a new beginning because it's my church. I can just get it. But they said, no, the court sends you somewhere and they send you to where they want to send you. And I was asking around, people were saying, um, when you're really, when you're doing community service for like a court case or a charge, most of the time you're picking up trash or you're cleaning the toilet somewhere or whatever, it's not really fun. So um, when Corona's, I've been trying to email them and I emailed them, then I just stopped. I'm like, I'm going to do the community service when it's like, when I'm done paying them the fine that I needed to pay. So during um, Corona, I was home. I was like, you know what? I should use this since I wasn't working as much. I said, I should use this time to knock out my community service. So I called and the lady was like, oh, let me look at your, your charges. So then she looked, she was like, oh, this is your first charge. You don't even have a record. So she said, you know what? I'll just give you, I'm supposed to do 50 hours, so that I'll give you an essay to write instead of having to go out to, to pick up trash or to clean somewhere. And I was like, an essay, I was like, are you sure? So I wanted to make sure she was hearing very well. So she was like, yeah. So I wrote the essay, I turned it in yesterday. So that essay was worth um, 20 um, hours. So then she said, I'm going to send you another one. And this one's gonna be worth 15. Then the next one is 15, and that's it. And the next one that she sent me, it was literally about the health field, what I do now. And I did it, and I sent it back to her. And she was like, you know what? I'm just gonna give you the whole point. So I just wanna thank God because that's something I knocked out of the way. Um, and then by the grace of God, soon I will finish paying them the remaining amount. So I just wanna praise God for forever. I want to bless the Lord for um, the accomplishment of worship session, the project we had in Paris with some French people, and it's going to start next week. So me and my line, and my line, and my line. 
and you probably make sure you go to like five week every week that you watch six sessions with different young worshippers. And I bet you like to that because it has been a long way. Mm -hmm. And finally we gave the world vision and we are really blessed that we sit in prayer in prayer. We are doing a prayer marathon. We we don't go three days right and all that but, ah it's so so something. <laughs> So is that all you Hallelujah. Know, people, no, no, thank you. Everybody yeah. can join, uh -huh. I think. Everybody. We have been because preparing. We, uh -huh. <laughs> we are all young in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. When I jumped the last time, actually, <laughs> I can't think. I can't disclose. But I finished dancing, I couldn't move a finger. <laughs> this thing of aging is really something. Amen. That was COVID response. Like, really? Mm -hmm. when, when there's no COVID, when we learn more. Uh, I trust you. That's why you are my friend. I, so. I, you know, like, I cannot sustain much energy. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So let's pray for the teaching. Father God, we thank you for this teaching. Father, we pray that this teaching will bless so many people. And we pray for understanding, give us wisdom. Release also the angel to go to war for this teaching, Father. As we are learning, Father, let it become a rhema for us, Father. So we can break the power of darkness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So the title of my teaching is The Power of Family Outcasts. Amen? Amen. The power of family altars. We read a lot, but I want you to grasp the most because most of the time when you have a case of prayer, you will never just brush off the case until you learn what is in the family of the person. Amen? Amen. So if you can take different Bible and everything and read it together. The first verse is Judge 6.25. And 27. Judge 6, 25 to 27. You can have if you have your phone. It's New Living Translation I have put. If you have another version, I'm, I will accept that too. Go ahead, please. It's 25 to 7, right? 25 to 27. Yeah. Judge 6, 25 to 27. And now it came to pass the same night that the Lord said to him, Take your father's young bull, the second bull of seven years old, and tear down the altar of bow that your father has, and cut down the wood of the Lord your father's altar. In the name of the city, too much to be in this case, we have a and do something for the Lord actually. Amen. And on that time, we know the story that he was suffering for the Midianites. For the Midianites, what they were the speciality, and he went into all of the up to the house. And when it's time to have the come and they eat everything you have. So you will walk, 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 and when it's time for you to enjoy your walk, here we take it. So what is a family altar? Someone can tell me. It's idolatry. It's, a, it's, a, it's something they serve. Yeah. Okay. What is a family altar? Yes. It's a covenant with covenant with an idol or a god made by somebody of your family and it takes us to kind of altar or kind of place. Okay. Yeah. You put it but in <laughs> the, the head, the tail, the, the feet somewhere else. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Seon, you have something, is it? Um I, I, I 
think in my interpretation is so it's something that is man-made so it's like a temple that is made from men and they worship it okay it's kind of that yeah I just say it's a family altar it's a place of intimacy and connection between a man his family and the deity Okay. Yes, it comes with the worship. The substance of the altar is not important. The altar could be stone, could be wood, could be iron, it's not important. So the altar is like a, a family tabernacle. We come together as a family and with a deity to submit. How we submit? By worshiping. What you say? Acknowledge that God by offering sacrifice, Amen. offering gift to the altar. Okay, so another one is is an elevated elevated place in which sacrifice and offering are made during worship. You worship, you service the altar. Okay, so as we come here, also we come to church. What we do, we worship. What are we doing here? Sacrifices or praise. You are offering to our God. Okay, so deity and God. Have something in common. Who can tell me? Just give me. But you make us alive more. What they have in common? Yes, it's one word. What they have in common? He said powers. What they have in common? Yeah. So what do you mean? Towards men? Mm -hmm. What do they give to men or what do they they have something in common? Deities and God, God of Father, have uh -huh. something in common. They feed themselves with worship. Oh. You understand? Uh -huh. It doesn't matter the amount of money you give them. What they want is worship. Uh -huh. It's why Satan was kicked out just because. It, it, he has all the gold and silver and all of the diamond on him and everything. But what he wants is the worship that the creation has toward God. Amen. So you have to understand that it's not the amount of money, it's your heart. God is after. So that is the same. Okay? So what happened is that feed themselves with worship and whenever you are worshiping or if someone in your family has a covenant to worship the God and he consecrates the family even if that person passed and the person after the generation after come and decide that no we don't want to worship we want to do others because the altar is not service the altar will start sending calamities to the people follow we start going after the people why? Because the altar needs service. You understand? And it's the same reaction with God. Let's read Isaiah 1, 2 to 4. Isaiah 1, 2 to 4. Isaiah 1, 2 to 4. Isaiah 1, 2 to 4, New King James. Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth, for the Lord has spoken. I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. The Stop there. He nourished and, and he says, I have nourished and brought up children. He nourished and brought up children, but they have, but they have rebelled against me. Uh huh. Continue. He says the ox knows its owner, mm -hmm. and the donkey its master's crib. Mm -hmm. But Israel does not know my people. Do not consider. Everyone knows his owner. You understand? And what he will do because of that? He says, alas, sinful nation, mm -hmm. a people laden with iniquity, mm -hmm. a brood of evildoers, mm -hmm. children who are corruptors. Mm -hmm. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked to anger the Holy One of Israel. They have turned away backward. They have provoked to anger. You understand? So, the, the God has nurtured you, has given you power, has given you protection, has done all of this. Now, you don't consider him. What happened is anger. 
and that anger go after you. It happened for the God Almighty. Even the God in the shrine and everything react the same. This person has done in your family, this covenant, he consecrate me five generations, ten generations. Now you don't want to worship me because you say you are in Europe, you are in India, you are in China. I will bring calamity on you. You understand? So we have to understand all of these implications and why we have to do warfare and we have to do delivery. Amen? So what we retain from this first information is an altar will regulate the life of those who worship. An altar will regulate the life of those who worship. And the second thing you can keep with you is an altar has a voice. An altar has a voice. We get to more and you have more education. So we go step by step. So every altar is dedicated and raised in the name of a God. If you do not raise an altar or worship, you cannot even, if you don't raise an altar, you cannot even worship. So the altar has to be established for you and you start worshiping to communicate with the God. Amen? So anytime you come to God, let's say you come to God here. He will look down in the lineage. You enter and you say, I belong to the family of Christ also. What God is doing, he will look down into your lineage and see if there's not another God that stands on his way. It's what happened with Gideon. Amen. Can you put a little bit there? Yes, you know, a little bit. I don't know if it's the fire I said or anything, just a little bit. So let me know. Oh. Tabu? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's go there. I thought you wanted me to put it. <laughs> no, no. I want him to go. Yeah, thank you. Because oh, you're getting cold. No, okay, okay, thank you. Okay. I'll actually, I can get this one. This one. Ah, okay. From the back. So he will look in your you. lineage. If there is another God, if there is another God, he cannot step in. He will step in only when you take care of whatever. Exactly. So, God has given all of us a free will. He gave you a free will, he gave me a free will. That means he cannot force himself. He cannot impose himself on us. From our own mouth, we have to say, we don't want you anymore. God of, uh, I don't know, Basa people or whatever. We don't want you anymore from our free will. Then he can act. Then he can walk in. Hallelujah. Amen. So we need to understand that principle. We must choose, your, we must choose our God with our free will. So God gives us his sacrifice by faith when Jesus died on the cross. So that we can turn away from the good, the gods of our ancestors. And the new place of altar now is the heart. He go after your heart. So it's looking, what is your heart? Who's calling? And the temple now is your body. Hallelujah. Amen. So we must check that any covenant that is oppressing our life with our own mouth, we have to overthrow that covenant. We have to destroy that covenant with our own mouth. And God will not bless a man who has already another God in his life. That is a principle. Amen? Amen. So, for God wants us to worship him in spirit and in truth. So we do not need to travel physically. When they say when we destroy altar and everything, you don't need to travel there to destroy. We can send fire from here and destroy from there. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We send fire, we send matches, we send everything, arousing, darts, and everything Amen. destroyed. Amen. TNT, bomb. Amen. 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 So let's pray this prayer together. Any strange God, any strange God, commanding my life, commanding my life, I send the blood of Jesus. I send the blood of Jesus. I send the fire of Jesus. I send the fire of Jesus. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So when we say we raise an altar, don't go, because sometimes they say, do an altar even at home. Now I have to tell you this, because we don't follow you home to know what you have done. Amen? Don't go and put the picture of Jesus that you find for us or anything. No, it's good to say, because we never know. Uh -huh. 
Don't go and put the cross of Jesus with Jesus on the cross. It's no more on the cross. Mm -hmm. Because you can go and find a cross somewhere in the in the store, like Catholic store, and you just buy it. Say, oh, that I will put in my altar. Please don't do that. Thing. Whoever you bow down to is not Jesus. It's Jesus. Is. Amen. Amen. It's good to know Jesus is in your heart. Amen. It's good to tell people. Amen. Amen. So do not put the cross. Do not put the picture. Amen. Do not start bound by even in front of the cross. Don't do that. It's in your heart. Amen. So now, in Jesus' name. Amen. What happened? Worship is a spiritual transaction. You have to understand. It's why the time of worship is very important. Uh, John 4 24 says, God is spirit, and those who worship him will worship in spirit and in truth. In spirit and in truth. In spirit and in truth. What does it mean? You cannot worship God except by the spirit. If you worship, you go somewhere and they ask you to worship God, but they ask you to do something different than worshiping in spirit. It's not what you are worshiping. Amen? Amen? It has to be clear. So, worshiping in spirit and in truth, what is it to worship in truth? Worshiping in truth is your lifestyle after you live here or after you leave church need to correspond to what you was doing when you are worshiping. Let's say, an example, I'm a professional thief. I come here and I worship. Then I go and I steal. I worship in spirit when you see me, but it's not really your spirit, but not in truth. I just gave an example for you to understand. So in truth, that means your life has to reflect the worship you are doing. So if your life is contrary of what you are doing on Sunday, you are not worshiping. You are not worshiping. A lot of people do what they want and they come on Sunday with the calf. You are not worshiping. Because the one who sees everything see you when you are doing that. Amen? In spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. Amen. So a lifestyle that mirrors the work of God. When you worship him, you lift up your hands, you focus on him, you minister to him. Hallelujah. As you are doing it, what you are doing, you are building an altar to him in your heart. And the altar grows as you are praising. And you remember when you pray, sometimes tongues take over. You are building as you are going up, as you are going up. There's a lot of, there's a, someone who was teaching and he said that as we are building, actually what happened, the ladder that Jacob saw is there and the angels are going up and down. The spiritual transaction between you and your worship. Sometimes they take your word. So your word in tongues become and magnify the Lord. As they magnify the Lord, the angels are coming down and taking and going up and taking. And, so it's a spiritual transaction. Hallelujah. So worship is nothing else but allowing God to fill your heart. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So now, what happened? When he looked down and he said, oh, Michelle is worshiping me. Oh, Reverend D is worshiping me. What is going now? He looked at your life and he's looking at you. Now he can release Amen. the blessing. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That is worship. Amen. Jesus said, I am the vine. So as you worship, he released what? The nutrients to the branches. Amen. Amen. We need to understand it like that. So in the law, when the law came to Gideon, what happened? Gideon has been crying. Oh, we are the people of Israel. Oh, we are the people of Israel. But say for this midnight, we are hiding in the cave. He came, he answered, say, I can come to you. But before I deal with you, there's another one who puts you under that oppression that you need to take care of. Amen? Amen. So sometimes when we come with a program to the Lord and we are not answered right away, we need to understand that. It's because our case is regulated to someone else. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We need to understand that one. If your case is 
they relate with someone else, you will need to address that first. Amen? So, the moment you um, you renounce the altar of the foreign God and accept the law of Israel, the one who sits on high above all principalities and power, you will seek first a fight. Because when you renounce, it will be good that they just say, okay, we are leaving. We have no thing to do this. No. No. They will we have been here for years. Mm -hmm. And sometimes there's a fight. Amen? Amen. Uh, but Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, some of us have idols. Some of us, the idols they are talking about, or the altar that they are talking, that is in our heart. Unfortunately, it's not necessarily a God. Some of us, it could be something in the heart that exalts himself more than God. Can be a friend. Amen? Shoes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Could be Facebook. The number of likes you have on Facebook. Instagram. Oh, they create them every day. Some of us, some of them, Snapchat, Bushi, Channel, could be shoes, could be gold, could be sex, could be money, could be food, could be yourself. So some of us, things that they sell themselves more than God is what we have in the heart. You think about more your image than what you have to circle. So when you come, sometimes you are even afraid that they will see you in something like an assembly of God. It can destroy your image because you are a star out there. You have to be careful. Amen? It's very important to check. Amen? So, your heart is set up over that thing. And you will know how you know that your heart Every time they try to touch that thing, like your image, oh, I don't know. I have someone who's watching, so I will not say anything, but if you know if I say it, God be blessing, amen? Amen. If, like, they take away that thing that you like, you can even refuse to come to church just because you are angry. So this is the way to check if something is becoming like a stronghold for you. You have to be careful. Do you love that thing more? Are you able to lose that thing and still praise God? Hallelujah. It's very important. Amen? So let's pray this prayer. Anything in my heart, Anything in my heart that is stealing me that is stealing me from God. From God. That is stealing my attention. That is stealing my attention. That is stealing my love. That is stealing my love. That is stealing my devotion. That is stealing my devotion. From God. Catch fire now. Catch fire now. I want you to pray again. Anything in my heart that is stealing me, stealing my attention, stealing my heart. In the name of Jesus.
one? Okay, I'll be really fast. Okay. Acts 17, 22 to 27. Okay. Then Paul stood in the midst of the Areopagus and said, Men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are very religious. For as I was passing through and considering the objects of your worship, I even found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God. Therefore, the one whom you worship without knowing, him I proclaim to you, God, who made the world and everything in it, since he is Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands, nor is he worshipped with men's hands as though he needed anything, since he gives life to all life, breath, and all things. And he has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on all the face of the earth and has determined their pre-appointed times and the boundaries of their dwellings so that they should seek the Lord in the hope that they might grow for him and find him though he is not far from each one of us. Amen. Amen. The people, when you read that passage, especially at 17, our text was so full of anger that they even put another one who has no God. It was so full. All they want was worshiping something. So they were ready to bow down to every new demon who come. They run and they do an altar. So to tell you that in the New Testament, it was a lot of those. Amen. Now let's go to Acts 14, 8 to 14. Acts 14. 8 to 14. And in Lystria, a certain man without strength in his feet was sitting, a cripple from his mother's womb, who had never walked. This man heard Paul speaking. Paul, observing him intently and seeing that he had faith to be healed, said with a loud voice, Stand up straight on your feet. And he left and walked. Now, when the people saw what Paul had done, they raised their voices, saying, in the Lycaonian language, the gods have come down to us in the likeness of men, and Barnabas they called Zeus and Paul Hermes, <laughs> uh, because he he was the chief speaker. Then the priest of Zeus, whose temple was in front of their city, brought oxen and garlands to the gate, intending to sacrifice with the multitude. But when the apostle Barnabas and Paul heard this, they tore their clothes and ran in among the multitude, crying out, crying out. Amen. Amen. So, look at this. In the middle of nowhere, they say, they consider Paul and Barnabas as gods. gods. And what they did, now in the temple, the priests and the priests of the temple and the crowd brought bulls and flowers. They prepared to offer sacrifice. Now, a question also here why they will bring to offer sacrifice to two people, living people? That means what? That is idolatry. What else? But they also believe that the God had come down in the form of those two people. Exactly. So we have to understand that sometimes you are fighting an altar. It may not be a physical place or an object. It could be someone who's completely possessed by the spirit. Amen. Do you understand? Amen. So we have to be careful. Hallelujah. Yeah. We have to be careful. So someone completely possessed will act exactly like a God and he himself represents like an altar. So let's go to Acts 19, 23, 35 now, to third. And about that third time, revelation. there arose a great commotion about the way for a certain man named Demetrius, a, a silversmith who made silver shrines of Diana, brought no small profit to the craftsmen. He called them together with the workers of similar occupation and said, Men, you know that we have our prosperity by this trade. 
Moreover, you see and hear that not only Ephesus, but throughout almost all Asia, this Paul had has persuaded and turned away many people, saying that they are not gods which are made with hands. So not only is this trade of ours in danger of falling into disrepute, but also the temple of the great goddess Diana may be despised and her magnificence destroyed, whom all Asia and the world worship. Now when they heard this, they were full of wrath and cried out, saying, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. So the whole city was filled with confusion and rushed into the theater with one accord, having seized Gaius, Gaius and Aristocrat and Macedonian, Paul's travel companions. And when Paul wanted to go into the people and the disciples, the disciples would not allow him. Then some of the officials of Asia, who were his friends, sent to him pleading that he would not venture into the theater. Some therefore cried one thing and some another, for the assembly was confused and most of them did not know why they had come together. And they drew Alexander, Alexander out of the multitude, the Jews putting him forward and an Alexander motion with his hand and wanted to make his defense to the people. But when they found out that he was a Jew, all with one voice cried out for about two hours, great is Diana of the Ephesians. Just stop there. You see the story. First, we continue on them. First, he said in 24, he's a Demetrius. He did a big business selling the queen of heaven. It's Diana, the goddess Diana. So when you, you even name your child Diana, you need to do deliverance of that name. Uh -huh. So he has a large business manufacturing a silver shrine of the goddess. He said, at last, 35, at last, the mayor was able to quiet them down enough to speak. Citizen of Ephesus, he said, everyone knows that Ephesus is the official guardian of the temple of the great Artemis. Ephesus is the official guardian. That means a city is the official guardian of a god. This is why even where you are located, you need to ask God, who is the God of this area? Because you can come to a place where you are asking God for blessing. He's not refusing because he's re he wants to refuse. Because you are under the domination of a certain deity. It's why it's important to know where you put your business. It's important to know where you put your as a Christian, they say the city is the official guardian of that God. That is one. Now, when he was reading, I think he was 27, they say when they want the, but they knew that he, 34, they knew he was a Jew, all with one voice, about the space of two hours, cry out, crazy Diana of the Ephesians. Two hours. Tell me, if I put you here for two hours to say one sentence only, that is showing you the level. The emotion is possession. Someone can cry the same word for two hours like that without his voice breaking nothing. They were possessed by that, that, that goddess. We have to understand the power of those things. Okay, finish 35. And when the city clerk had quieted the crowd, he said, Men of Ephesus, what man is there who does not know what the city of Ephesians is, temple guardian of the great goddess Diana, and of the image which fell down from Zeus? And the image that fell down here is a from Jupiter. The image that fell down is where you stop. The image that fell down from heaven. What is the image that fell down from heaven? You remember when the devil did rebellion? Yeah. What happened? He went up down 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 down. Down. Yeah. They are telling you, it's in that time that image fell down on that region and they took him as a god. So we have to understand that. Some angels that were rebellious fell and Took domination. 
So when you are living in an area, you need to know what is consecrated to that area. You need to know as a Christian. Hallelujah. It's important for your business. Except if you don't want to do business and it's just, even if it's vacation, it's important for your investment to know who is in that area. It's not when you are in Africa, it's here. Hallelujah. You need to know so you can prosper. Amen. So let's go. All of the points. I will ask you after what you have seen on altar before we go to Wolfe. Hallelujah. So repairing the altar is where I was before. Hallelujah. I'm going back. So 1 Kings 18.22. Michelle, you can look for it. I think we can see it. 1 Kings. 1 Kings 18.22. There come a time where some family altars need repair. Because you remember, I told you the, the teaching is the power of family altar. Elijah decided to challenge the prophet of Baal in the old altar. He didn't go somewhere else. But let's retake something before she starts reading. The altar that he challenged them on was before the altar of Israel. Baal came and put the stuff on. But it was before the altar of the Lord. Okay? Because sometimes when we send you, you destroy on it. Okay? Sometimes you need to repair. You don't build up. But we go today. Let's play. Read, please. Yes, 1822. In the Bible, before Israel was worshipping, before the time of uh, Jezebel and all of this. Uh -huh. Um, first Kings 1722. No, 1822. Oh, 1822 says, Then Elijah said to the people, I alone am left a prophet of the Lord, but Baal's prophets are 450 men. Amen. Read 22 all the way to uh, 24. Then you read 30. Okay. Let me start at the top, 22 to 24. Mm -hmm. Then Elijah said to the people, I alone am left a prophet of the Lord, but Baal's prophets are 450 men. Therefore, let them give us two bulls, and let them choose one bull for themselves, cut it in pieces, and lay it on the wood, but put no fire under it. And I will prepare the other bull, and lay it on the wood, but put no fire under it. Then you call on the name of your God, and I will call on the name of the Lord. And the God who answers, answers by fire, he is God. So all the people answered and said, it is well spoken. Amen. Okay. And then that is first. What we have here, Elijah is one. Mm -hmm. Amen. All of them together, they are 450. Mm -hmm. So it's one against 450. Mm -hmm. Sometimes here we have to fight only one and we are crying. One against 450. Amen. Okay? Mm -hmm. Let's continue. Verse 30. Mm -hmm. Then Elijah said to all the people, Come near to me. So all the people came near to him, and he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. Amen. 31 and 32. And Elijah took 12 stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, to whom the word of the Lord had come, saying, Israel shall be your name. Then with the stones, he built an altar in the name of the Lord, and he made a trench around the altar large enough to hold two seers of seed. Amen. Amen. What is happening when you start fighting altar? When you start fighting altar, and before that, you know that he called on the fire, the fire came down, and he killed the prophet of Baal. But what happened when you start fighting altar in your life is, you will repair the altar of the family, of the altar of God. Amen? So Elijah, what he did is, he didn't go somewhere else, another location, but he took one stone. He said, this is for Reuben. This is for Joseph. This is, so you start putting things together and you put what? The family together. You put the different family, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, you are putting the family back together. Because when the altar has been taken by the evil, 
most of the time the family has no understanding. The family becomes dysfunctional. The family, everyone goes left and right and everything. But as you start fighting the war against the altar, you will see the family coming and you have to put them back together. It's why most of us, when we start doing deliverance and fighting, the strong men of the family, first thing is you introduce your brother, you introduce your sister, you introduce, you bring your family together. And those family after are important for God. Because when God comes, he will not come on and say, eh, Michelle, oh, that is good, you came in the house of the Lord. No, he will stand. He is a poor fool. All of the poor fool need to serve God. You understand? It's the way the law acts. When he comes and says, okay, Reverend D, okay. Who are all the voodoo here? Or who are all the seeker here? It's the way. Amen? Amen. So as we are destroying the altar of the enemy, think about it. The Lord is not thinking about you only. He's thinking about the impact you have in your family and how you bring those people to God. Hallelujah. This is why Elijah repaired. Because he had to put the 12 tribes together. He has to build it. And it's when he built those stones, it's where he worshiped God. Amen. Hallelujah. This is very important. Because sometimes we go to war, we destroy, but we forget why we are sent there. Because as soon as we say, we say, hey, I'm in the right side now. Hallelujah. Amen. And he start looking at the order. Mm, she's not stable. Mm. Uh-huh. And everything. No. Your role is what? You fight that strong man until you release your brother. You fight that strong man until you release your sister. You fight the strong man until your whole family will have an altar to God. Hallelujah. It's very important to understand. So the 12 stone representing every tribe of Israel. Some of you are called to repair altars of God in your family and put back any of the siblings into the right track. And all of you, you can worship God. So the devil has destroyed so many works of family. Unity, family unity to weaken or family altar. I've seen family, and I have people like that. I've seen family when, when the brother called them, they receive a call from the brother. I didn't say from anyone. From the brother, they start shaking. They wonder what is the next attack. That is the enemy plan. You understand? To be fearful. Hallelujah. We need to destroy the stronghold of family disunity and repair of family altars. So today we are breaking by fire any altar of Baal. Amen. Amen. Break down all of the uh, Asherah pole. Amen. Amen. The monitoring spirit. The Asherah pole are sometimes combined with monitoring spirit. We break down the power of the monitoring spirit in our life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Next is, there is an anointing to destroy evil altars. Hallelujah. 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 There is an anointing to destroy family altars, to Amen. destroy the evil altar. So let's take Second King 11 from 1 to 21. It's a little bit long, but it's a very interesting. You need the Bible here? Okay. Get the Bible from the box. And you can keep it. It's yours from now. Amen. First, in Second King 11, 1 to 21. Very interesting story. Amen. Amen. Second King 11. When Athaliah, the mother of Ahaziah, saw that her son was dead, she arose and destroyed all the royal heirs. But Jehosheba, the daughter of King Joram, sister of Ahaziah, took Joash, the son of Ahaziah, and stole him away from among the king's sons, who were being murdered, and they hid him and his nurse in the bedroom from Athaliah, so that he was not killed. So he was hidden with her in the house of the Lord for six years, while Athaliah reigned over the land. In the seventh year, Jehoiada sent and brought the captains of hundreds of the bodyguards and the escorts, and brought them into the house of the Lord to him, and he made a covenant with them, and took an oath from them in the house of the Lord, and showed them the king's son. Then he commanded them, saying, This is what you shall do. One third of you who come on duty on the Sabbath shall be keeping watch over the king's house. 
one third shall be at the gate of Sir, and one third at the gate behind the escort. You shall keep the watch of the house, lest it be broken down. The two contingents of you who go off duty on the Sabbath shall keep the watch of the house of the Lord for the king. But you shall surround the king on all sides, every man with his weapons in his hand, and whoever comes within range, let him be put to death. You are to be with the king as he goes out and as he comes in. So the captains of the hundreds did according to all that Jehoiada the priest commanded. Each one of them took his men who were to be on duty on the Sabbath, with those who were off duty on the Sabbath, and came to Jehoiada the priest. And the priest gave the captains of hundreds the spears and shields which had belonged to King David, that were in the temple of the Lord. Then the escort stood, every man with his weapon in his hand, all around the king, from the right side of the temple to the left side of the temple, by the altar and the house. And he brought out the king's son, put the crown on him, and gave him the testimony. They made him king and anointed him, and they clapped their hands and said, Long live the king. And now we'll stop there one minute. We continue after. So look at the story. As an infant, he's supposed to be king. But what happened? Someone who's uh, rule decided it will not happen. She killed everybody until they hide that little one, infant. So they take him and they bring him to the temple and he's living in the temple, hiding. The king is hiding. Who's ruling the evil one? Amen. You understand? The king is hiding. You are a king Amen. for God. Some of you are hiding. Why? The enemy blocking. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh dear. Hallelujah. This priest came and he said no. And he started organizing them. And what happened? They pulled him at 12. They brought out Joash, the king's son. Bless the crown. There's a crown you need to carry. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. There's a crown you need to carry. Amen. A lot of us come like that and we say, oh no, I don't know, I'm, I'm feeling. No, there's a crown you need to carry. Amen. Amen. But someone took it away. But in the name of Jesus, we go after that. <laughs> Present him with a copy of God's law. He showed him the law. You are the next king. Amen. They anointed him. Hallelujah. Amen. Proclaimed him king. And everyone clapped their hands. Hallelujah. Amen. As they were clapping hands to glorify the Lord, he annoyed the other one. Mm -hmm. So sometimes when you are praising and clapping hands, what is doing? He's annoying the enemy. Amen? Amen. So we clap the hands today like a Amen. sign of victory. Amen? Amen. So go to the 13. Now when Adaliah heard the noise of the escorts and the people, she came to the people in the temple of the Lord. When she looked, there was the king standing by a pillar according to custom, and the leaders and the trumpeters were by the king. All the people of the land were rejoicing and blowing trumpets. So Adaliah tore her clothes and cried out, Treason! Treason! And Jehoiada the priest commanded the captains of the hundreds, the officers of the army, and said to them, Take her outside under guard and slay with the sword whoever follows her. For the priest had said, Do not let her be killed in the house of the Lord. So they seized her, and she went by way of the horse's entrance into the king's house, and there she was killed. Then Jehoiada made a covenant between the Lord, the king, and the people, that they should be the Lord's people, and also between the king and the people. And all the people of the land went to the temple of Baal and tore it down. They thoroughly broke it in pieces, its altars and images, and killed Matan, the priest of Baal, before the altar. And then stop there. They went, what they did, they destroyed what? The altar, Amen. that is what? They destroyed what? The priest. The priest. When you destroy the altar, you go after the priest. Why? Disturbing it. Disturbing it. And he can raise one. another one. He can raise another one. He can raise another one. So sometimes it's like talk war. You call it talk war? Talk war. 
talk of war. Uh -huh. Because you pull here, he's pulling it. You pull here. But I was thinking, I did already one more for fast for that. Why is coming back strong like that? They rebuilt. They rebuilt. So you go after the altar, you go after the priest. You need to destroy the power of that priest. If it's stubborn, he will die. Amen. Amen. You go after the both. And then they destroy also what? The image. Hallelujah. The image, the system of monitoring. Because you wonder, like, how I can do something here? But in Nigeria, they know what I did. Monitoring. Mm -hmm. I do something in my closet. I'm the only one who knows. How they know? Monitoring system. You understand? We have to destroy those. You don't just destroy the altar. Destroy the monitoring system Amen. behind the altar also. Amen. Amen. The information system. Okay, go ahead. I'll just begin at 18 again. Mm -hmm. And all the people of the land went to the temple of Baal and tore it down. They thoroughly broke in pieces its altars and images mm -hmm. and killed Matan, the priest of Baal, before the altars. And the priest appointed officers over the house of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Then he took the captains of hundreds, the bodyguards, the escorts, and all the people of the land, and they brought the king down from the house of the Lord and went by way of the gate of the escorts to the king's house. Then he sat on the throne of the kings. So all the people of the land rejoiced, and the city was quiet, for they had slain Adaliah with the sword in the king's house. Joash was seven years old when he became king. Amen. He became king at seven. And seven is a number for God. Completeness. Completeness. Hallelujah. Amen. So we have to understand that this happened because of the hand of God. Hallelujah. But you see the process. Okay? They anoint him. They anoint him. They crown him. They crown him. Now they can go and they destroy the altar. They destroy the altar. They destroy the image and they destroy the priest. You go after the priesthood. It's not enough to just fight the altar. You go after the one who's feeding that altar. The one who's doing all of the things and the sacrifice. The one who say, I will intercede for you. You go after him. Hallelujah. When you destroy him, is when you will see the oppression stopping in your family. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. So Atalia was queen. Atalia was a queen. It was a, like a queen. A queen. Yeah, would queen you, Atalia. So would you say she's the equivalent of the witch or the wizard? Yeah, it's an enemy. She took the place. She took the place and started ruling. It was not her time to rule. But it was not her place. It was another kingdom. Okay? Because she took the king's son. What happened? She was angry. We can go in the background if you want. No, no, no. no. Mm -hmm. I, that was like, I was trying to think there was four things that were killed, not three. So she, mm -hmm. was not the king. You said there was the she was the first one to be killed because she was the one who. Yeah, and then there was the idol, then mm -hmm. there was the priest, and mm -hmm. then there was the, the image. Yeah. She can be part of the demon army yeah. to institute the person. You understand? Yeah. Can be like the executive one, mm -hmm. but we destroy that one first. Okay? Mm -hmm. So when you have an altar, actually you have to study and see how the altar manifests. Mm -hmm. Some altar manifest when I've seen, I've, I've prayed with uh, a lot of people, some altar manifest with sex. Okay? Like uh, the person we have uh, a husband of night in the night, as soon as you have like a promise of a job and everything, you come just that night, knowing that you have an interview tomorrow. You understand? It can manifest also, and that one I have an example. I have one of my sister, one of the elders, they never gave the dowry because we are African, we do traditional and everything. The husband never gave dowry, okay? The day he decided to give dowry, he called my mom. And my mom said, oh, I'm not the oldest person, you know. You have to go to the patriarch. And the patriarch, who is that? 
strong men because we have been at war for years. I know he's a strong man. They don't know the strong man. Or they know, but they do like, okay, we owe him some respect. So they decide that they will give it to him. So they call him and they say, can you meet us in the village and everything? And uh, because there's a diary and everything, since you are the oldest one and everything. I didn't know anything about all of this. Amen? I'm here in Mandora, watching my, my children and everything. Then I see in the night, that uncle coming with a car, and he come and I'm in the house with my mom and my sister. He said, oh, I'm coming to give you gift. And I look, I say, since when that man can give something good to someone? You understand? So as soon as I come like that, I say, since when that man can come and give something to someone? My, man, my mother was already out. My sister was out. I just came to look like what good can come from that man. When I put my head like that, he saw me. A black a guy was taller than him. He came in from behind him like that. He jumped on me. The fight we have the night. So the, the, the thing who was guarding him, or I don't know what, the spirit who go with him just came out like that and we start fighting. So we fought, I woke up in the morning, I took my phone, I called my mom, I said, what is going on? She said, why? I said, I saw this uncle coming home and trying to give something. But what is giving, if you touch, you don't want it because if you destroy that marriage, it's like a marriage or something. I saw him giving a gift. She said, oh, your sister did not tell you. The one she told me. Oh, he's just here to carry the diary. He will just, just be there to carry the diary because he's the oldest one. I said, Excuse me? Who's fasting and praying? I don't want to fast and pray anymore. And you go and you get the person who's bringing you trouble every day. He will not touch that one. I call my sister. My sister said, Yeah, since it's you only who can see God, it's always you. Always you with your hallelujah. And she's my older sister. So trust me, I don't I stay quiet when she talks. So I say, listen, I'm not challenging you or anything. All I know is if you touch that diary, that marriage is finished. I don't care if you have 20 years with your, your, your husband. I'm telling you, because the way the guy acts, and you that this one is the one who acts sometimes like husband of night when my sister complains. So she said, no, I don't know, but we have to do the right thing. We have to go in the family. How we tell him not to come anymore and everything? I said, okay, okay, there's no problem. The Rambabalola was coming. I said, Rev, this is when you're my good papa. There's a man who has to come to the village to do this ceremony and this. I don't want him to come because I've been fighting warfare with him. And I know who he is. I cannot hide. He said, okay. My sister, you know, the <laughs> I mean, I mean. Uh -huh. my sister, come in agreement. Amen. Lord, let him be flogged <laughs> in the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> let him, uh, let him be, let make it impossible for him to come and everything. And then he woke up the next day. He was sick. He couldn't move. My uncle. Yeah. He couldn't move. He just called my mom and said, eh, I have fever. I don't know what is happening. So I cannot come. So just, just do the ceremony without me. We talk later. My, my, my mom said, even, even if you don't stay, you just, he said, no, 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 I'm telling you, I cannot come there. So when my mom carried the thing, come to Dwala, like four days after or five days, he's feeling well now. He's called, mommy, uh, my mom, he said, can I come and get the money they have given? My mom said, no. She called me. We don't know my mom. She called me first. Hey, he's asking for the money. I told him that I will call him later and leave it. What should I do? I said, go, the first church you see, drop that money on the altar. Amen. So he called back. She said, oh, I have a bill to pay, so I pay the bill. Whenever we have the amount again, I will call you back. He was so angry against my mom. And this man has a lot of money. He had a lot of money. He died now. 
he had a lot of money. So it's not that kind of amount to be looked after. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. So you have to understand how to go after. And the Lord put you as watchmen. When something is happening in your family, guess what? He will give it to you in dream. You wake up knowing that something is happening. So you take your position directly and you go. Don't wait. Amen? Don't wait. Because as soon as you start manifesting the power of God or the glory of God, they are afraid of you. They know. You enter the city, they know that you are in the city. Oh yeah. They know that you are in the city. They will not hide. They know you are there. Amen? But you need to know the way they operate. When you destroy, don't just destroy. No. Destroy the altar. Destroy the receptacle of power. Destroy the priest. Destroy everything. And all oh, what I do, I take the cross of Christ spiritually and I plant it. Now come and worship. Hmm. Is the way we are. Amen. Mm -hmm. Any other question before we go to prayer? Hallelujah. Go ahead. I have a question. I was just um, um Adalia was um, she was now more like the the thing that exalts itself above mm -hmm. God because she put herself in the line of, of rulership. She wasn't supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And because she was angry, she decided she was going to rule his place. Mm -hmm. So she becomes like a Jezebel, right? Mm -hmm. Because that's the type of, of attitude. Jezebel, every spirit, something that tried to usurp your power, usurp your authority, usurp your position, try to take over. Strong uh -huh. women or strong women. Yes, yeah, strong women. Mm -hmm. Another question? Okay, what have you retained on Alta? If you don't have a question, I'm the one asking you a question. Go ahead, ask your question. Um, why can you keep asking them to ask you? <laughs> mm -hmm. okay. You know, what I wanted to do, um, ask actually was my, because I was often asked, I wanted to know, okay, this altar, mm -hmm. the, the example that we took, because it's a couple of more, mm -hmm. her example is um, when the person is not supposed to, to be mm -hmm. the the priest of the family and mm -hmm. he put themselves there as mm -hmm. a priest of the family mm -hmm. or the person received the rightful power mm -hmm. from generation to generation, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. That's my question. Mm -hmm. If the person is using evil power as Christian, mm -hmm. anyone who is using any kind of power mm -hmm. to destroy, to manipulate, to kill, is from the devil. Amen. Yeah, but so what I was asking is, what we are addressing with her example is it because she wrongfully observed the power of she it? killed all of those mm -hmm. people she killed all of those people and if that child was uh, have survived mm -hmm. uh, yeah she could have she could have killed him too you understand yeah and I, I know how she got there what i'm mm -hmm. saying is what we are doing here it will apply to anybody who takes the power by an inheritance mm -hmm. or someone who comes and take over by fire. Take by over. Destroy. Yeah, that's destroy. what I'm saying. Yeah. So it's not because she, she she was not the rightful person to stand as the power of the family. Mm -hmm. It's just because she she needs to be destroyed. So if, even if the person gets the power mm -hmm. by an inheritance, evil inheritance, because there's that mm -hmm. evil inheritance where it's not like in, in the case of your uncle, in mm -hmm. the case the, the uncle died, and mm -hmm. then all of a sudden they say, okay, this is the new head of a family. But it's not simply he has a family because he's old or he has more money, yes. but because he just got transferred mm -hmm. the evil power. Mm -hmm. uh -huh, that's what I'm saying. In yeah. Natalia's case, she did not get transferred anything. She went and took, she took it uh -huh. by force. That's right. Uh -huh. I was just... <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say to reference, if I, 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 I tell you something, you ask the question that the, some spirit come into us to take advantage of the weakness, the perceived weakness, and then they put themselves above, which is what she did. Mm -hmm. There was mm -hmm. a problem in the family, and she saw an opportunity, yeah, and, she got, and then she, she then 
acquired that mm-hmm. position of strong yeah. men or less yeah. strong women of your family. So yeah. yeah, on the basis of association, fire fire on everybody. Altars, yes, the question that you asked. Yeah. What did you retain? I retained that an altar actually has certain characteristics. Number one, there is a priest. Mm-hmm. that is active in sacrificing on that altar. Mm-hmm. The second part is there are actually people who support mm-hmm. that priest. So mm-hmm. it's like an association of, of little buddies and whatever that happens there. And that the altar, sometimes it's a physical thing, other times it's not a physical thing. It mm-hmm. could also be what is within you. It can be person. a spirit. It can be also carried. Let's say you hire a nanny mm-hmm. or you hire someone and she brings something tied, a charm. She puts every time she wants to transform or she wants to get out of her body, she just bags down in front. Her spirit, she's gone. She become a bird or whatever. She brings it inside your house. You, you understand? It's why some people, like in Baco, you finish prayer night, you come, you, you, you find out your gatekeeper has uh, disappeared or things like that because the fire you sent them, he couldn't see. You understand? <laughs> ah, because if they carry something that is contrary, as soon as you send the fire, they cannot see. Amen. Okay? Uh-huh. Yes, mommy. Can you assign a family as author for a spouse? Oh, yeah, sure. You can do that. Yeah. You can do that. You, you are a family altar for a spouse. Yeah, you are the righteous one. You can do that. Amen. If not, be it's a long time. We shouldn't be married anymore. Amen. Hallelujah. Go ahead. You know, you have the story to be told about the guy. So, like, for instance, what if I took this one and took away? Does it still manifest? Oh, it depends of the power of that charms. Do you understand? Uh, it depends on the damage. You have to have someone who can see in the spirit to tell you exactly what is going on. So you don't just find something, you throw it away. Okay? Because that thing has a spiritual power and you need to know what happened. So you need like sort, a sort of cleansing and uh, sanctification. Uh-huh. Yes. And, uh-huh. Before you move, you ask. It's why you pray. Okay. Yeah. Because you can go to a place. Let's say you want to build a church. Okay? And the place where you are going has a highly, highly marine activity. It's next to the, the, the water and nightclub all over, strip club and all of this. And you, you go, you go and, and plant your church there. If you are not ready to wage war against all of this, please don't plant your church there. Like people who send up, yeah, I've seen African who have delivered ministry, powerful in more American country. Then they say, okay, let's go have a bigger place and everything in DC. You know, they came out of there. The kind of demon you have in DC, please. There was one morning I was driving, a lady in the middle of DC, she removed her dress like that, she was naked. And she was telling, I was driving, it's not the movie. I was driving and saw it myself. And she tells the person who was passing by, because the person slowed his car. Mm-hmm. She said, it's what you want to see. Mm-hmm. And the Lord told me, hey, this city, drug, sex, money. You have to understand. So you have some area when you move, you have to ask God. Anywhere you go, you can ask God. Amen. If you are not there by assignment of God, please. And you have some area when you move, if you are not strong in prayer, they start influencing you and tell that that testimony is the right time. You enter an area, there's poverty everywhere. You pay your rent cheaper, but your finance start going down. Up to the time you cannot move out of that area anymore. You become collective captivity. <laughs> ah. mm-hmm. What did you retain? Before you ask your question. So that question was put out 
Go ahead. <laughs> It can be a person also. Mm -hmm. Or a city. Or a city. It can be a guardian of a city, a spirit guardian in a city. Go ahead. I learned that family offers are important to God. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it has put us in those families to mm -hmm. be able to um, give back mm -hmm. and all down to Him. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess that sometimes takes uh, focus off of little struggles that fight here and there and just. You know, just focusing on bringing everyone back to life. Mm -hmm. And you will see that as you go in the spirit, one of the signs that show that you are growing is your brothers that follow you. Mm -hmm. It's one of the signs. So when your brothers start following you, you start being two, where two or three are together. One which is 1,000, two, 10,000. Mm -hmm. So the power is increasing because your brother are coming, your sister, your mom. People start being saved around you. It's one of the signs that you are growing in the spirit. Mm -hmm. If I see you that you cannot speak to your brother, you cannot speak, but you come here every day, you speak in tongues 10 hours, I will still miss you. Sit down a little bit. People, you understand? That means that you didn't start. You was not delivered. You was not delivered. Something is still there holding you. You understand? Because one of the fruit of the spirit is love. If you are not able to love, something's wrong with you. Who's inside? You see? So it's one of the signs that you are getting through. Your brother start coming, even the wrong one, they start. You can push someone out of hell. Do you know that? I tell the story of Kayanja, <laughs> who said that one of his cousins only was not saved. He would drink until he would drink. So, he stopped addressing the cousin because the cousin said, All of you, hallelujah, stay far away from me. Me, I like my beer. Don't bother me. So it's okay. He started bombarding Satan, losing. You will lose him in Jesus' name. You will lose him in Jesus' name. So when he go to war, he go against Satan. Doesn't care about what the cousin like or does not like. What happened? The cousin went to the bar, first thing, rejection. All of his companions of the dear father said, Hey, we don't want you anymore here. You stay away. We don't want you in this house. And he couldn't understand. So he decided, that, okay, since they don't want me in those place, let me buy my beer and go home and drink. <laughs> he take the beer, drink, it tastes like water. So he throw it up. How ah, beer can he go to the what did you sell to me? I told you beer. No, you cannot be. It's like water. He said, Hey, I sold you beer. That is beer. He said, No, he couldn't taste it anymore. He went back to his cousin and he said, I know it's you. <laughs> <laughs> so you can even kick someone out without his permission. You go after the other, release him. Satan and break your neck. You stand the fire every day. He will release the person. Amen. The last time, another thing before I get to you girls. I called mom, you know, we are doing her. Um, we are watching the way she's improving, recovering, and everything. Like two or three days ago, I called her. I spoke with her two minutes in the morning. Two minutes. In the evening, when you are talking to her, she just said, mm, 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 no work. And then the, uh, the veteran, 
because he's at home. He comes in back and says, Oh, I don't know why she stopped talking. I look at her. She stopped talking. Okay, put your phone on her ear. In the name of Jesus, you lose her now. In the name, I send the fire to you. You will try to put silence in her spirit. I send the fire. I send the fire. I finished. She didn't move and everything. I said, Okay, see you tomorrow. She's the one who woke me up at 6 30. <laughs> 6 30, she was calling me and saying, Hey, Miss Paul, how are you? You understand? Yeah. We are being spectator too long. Now you have to put order. It's why you are learning this. Don't place, don't start and everything. Don't think that, oh, it's just something they do a lot in Africa. No. Those things are dictating the life of people. I've seen people come all the way to Europe, try to do something, everything mess up until they go back home. Then the life starts bringing a little bit, a little bit. Why? The altar said they cannot live past a certain level. You have to be careful. Amen? Yo, what did you retain, Sean? Okay, so my question was first that mm -hmm. is is purifying spirit pouring out of altar? You can you can call some territorial like the one you say in Ephesus, mm -hmm. who was the guardian of the city. You understand? It was a territorial spirit. Yes, it's a part of it. But now an altar is a place consecrated with God. Okay. You understand? Mm -hmm. So I can enter. Let's say an example. I enter Ogun State, okay? I can enter, some will be attached to the Queen of the Coast. Some will be attached to the Ifa divination. Some will be attached to different, different, different gods. You understand? So, even if those spirits are roaming, each one has an altar and is attached to a different spirit. You understand? So when I will come and pray, I will pray and the Holy Spirit, by the grace of God, will reveal me what is the spirit that is maintaining him in that position. You get me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what I learned from the last week on altar is that there are certain altars that can be limitations from us to hear from God or receiving blessings from God. Mm -hmm. And we have the authority to break that. Mm -hmm. Said as well. And I also learned about um, how altars can be monitoring. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. They do a lot of monitoring. I even have his boss. He was bird following everyone in the US. And he was a young guy. Uh huh. You have? Yeah. Okay. I think, I, I think to add to what Amatora said, that making the documentary or you alluded to it like that. One person, because um, Elijah was he challenged 450, so he was able to destroy them. So that the power of one is very powerful. Mm -hmm. You are worshiping the truth. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And he knew already God would back him up yeah. because it yeah. was that time. He's the one who made an appointment. He yeah. actually wasn't really one, he was four, the Trinity person. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> He's the one who said, Let's meet there, let's see there. You understand? And we have to do that when we are in prayer and we are in deliverance. We have to know that we are not by ourselves. Whatever prayer you are doing, actually you have more than three. You have Hebrew 2, 24. You have the great witness. You bring them to Mount Zion, to the court of heaven. You judge them. Amen. Did you, what did you retain? I retain uh, as you say, Ephesians. Jesus was the guardian of I don't know if it's from this or Diana. Mm -hmm. from the yeah. So when you go against an altar, for example, let's say I'm going against an altar that is in my village, mm -hmm. it's, in, it's in the city. Mm -hmm. I have to destroy the power of the of the god of that city first. So I have to, I maybe have to destroy the power of the priest, the power of the god that is that is praying to, the power of the place where you put all the sacrifices. So I I won't only have to go and destroy only the altar. 
because there's a lot of stuff around the altar as well to be destroyed. Mm -hmm. and you focus on the altar and the priest. Those are the most important. So you see, like the last case, they destroy a area, but they have to destroy power and they have to destroy the priest. Because that spirit inside Italia can go to someone else, will be transferred to someone else. You understand? Uh huh. Go ahead. And another thing that I'm saying is that you can't worship without establishing an altar to covenant and mm -hmm. an alliance with mm -hmm. the God you're worshiping. Mm -hmm. So as you're worshiping God, you have you must have a covenant with Him that will speak against another altar and center to. Mm -hmm. Another thing, now that you talk, they remind me. Elijah asked for the fire to come and destroy the altar. Amen? Or worship also, as we are worshiping and we are praying against altar, we have to make sure that the fire that we are invoking is really falling on the altar. So altar are not destroyed on the first prayer. So we have to pray until the altar of the enemy is consumed. Hallelujah. Amen. It's very important. Because some will come, you pray, you don't even last, you are checking the time and everything you run and you say, oh, I don't need last week. No. Pray. Consecrate time. Ask God for fire in your life to destroy that altar. Ask God for the anointing to destroy that altar. Amen? Yes. That's fine. Okay. So let's say you went to some dedicated to the altar, like mm -hmm. the altar. So if I were to like, could I, could I fight for that for my siblings or my family, or is it just the same thing? Like, it, yeah, it's the same thing. As a soldier, by the grace of God, when he reveal you something, I usually tell to people, what is revealed is redeemed. Amen? When it's revealing you something of radiance, you can go after it. When you say it's okay. And he will give you the strategy to go after it. Okay? So you can be sleeping and everything, and you ask God, okay, could you show me what is wrong with this person? He show you a prison, and he show you like a priest, someone guarding the prison and everything. So, okay, Lord, can I do it? Can I fight for him? He will tell you, yes, what passage? It's a conversation. You put the passage down. You take your two days fast. Pa, 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 in heaven. You see only the person coming, like he just discovered you in the house. How are you? And you yourself, you wonder. You understand? It's the way it's happening. The spiritual, when you go spiritual, it happens naturally. But you have to go spiritual. There's nothing done in the natural. In the natural, you will try. You will never get them. In the spirit, is where you get them. There was a fight. The things I will write when I will finish. There was a fight when my mom was at the hospital. Even people come and say that they have seen the family coming to get her. Like, let go. And most of the sisters are there. You understand? So I call in the morning. My mom is crying. And she was between two rooms. I said, what is going on? She said, oh, you, you guys don't want me to go with my mom. I want to go with my mom. This is my mother talking to me. I said, you want to go away? <laughs> She said with my mom, I said that death, death and living people has nothing to do. I said I rebuke them, I send fire to them, and I bury them again in Jesus' name. All of this on the phone. She stay quiet. She said, I said, if you have to choose between us and, and your mom, who will you choose? You know me. <laughs> she said, I want to see my mom. I said, you will not see her now because it's not your time. You have people, living people, you stay. You think the question she was asking are just innocent? No. She's between two real. You understand? You have to address it. You know spiritual, go spiritual. Amen? Now God, if God say, okay, release her, she's tired. Father, let your will be done. Amen? Amen? But if he say you can say something, you say it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's start praying. Hallelujah. Yes. The one point I wanted to offer, it was interesting to me how um, when Paul went to Ephesus, mm -hmm. the person that actually caused all the problems, it wasn't because he was particularly in love with Diana. It was because they were impacting his business. Yes. So because of his business, mm -hmm. he knew how to incite the right people mm -hmm. in order 
to get the ends that you wanted. I thought that was so mm -hmm. interesting that you oh, can beautiful. have, uh, yeah, besides that, these spirits, how they will work is they are very manipulative. Mm -hmm. They will manipulate the system, the, the, the system in order for them to remain where they yeah, are and be unencumbered. It's the same I when you are a prayerful so person in the city and you start destroying altars mm -hmm. and you start going after like high people in the society, secret society and everything, they will attack you. Mm -hmm. Even in church, if you have a pastor who's in the, we had a pastor first, who, uh, not first, but we had a pastor who was Freemason. When we start praying, oh my God, he start coming. You will see him just coming in the meeting and looking at you like. <laughs> and then he came, he said that we shouldn't pray after 8 p.m. He said, God is not there. Mm -hmm. So if you have prayed from 6 to 8, it's enough. Go home. He looked at him. He couldn't understand. We continue back and we were eight more for fasting. Hallelujah. One day I was doing deliverance. I always told my, 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 my sister here, I am in the middle. And that day I was so mad. Mad against the devil. Yeah. Mad against the devil. So I'm there sending the fire in the husband of night. And that husband of night, he wants to bite me. I know it's a little bit funny. Yeah. He was like, when I do my finger like that, he tried to bite me. And everything. I say, if you touch me in the name of Jesus, I'm sending the fire and destroy. And, then, and so the, the, she said, I'm mm, looking at me. <laughs> I scream, I scream at everything. Next I turn, who oh, I'm seeing, the bishop himself, he came with bodyguard. They have the big like FBI or stuff uh -huh. like that. He's walking around. He's looking what we are doing. You think I look at him? I have something to fight there. We look at you. Yeah. Are you helping me? I'll set the fire. I said the fire. He just looked, walking, and went back. But I think it's that day he wanted to close that place. Mm -hmm. He wanted, he came down to close that place. But he found me in the fight. If he has put his finger through, God himself yeah. will answer him. Amen? Amen? So you have to understand when you start war, and another example, someone has his altar and everything. He's in the spirit and he's in reality. That means what? He knows when something puts him in danger. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. I remember once I, I have to rent an apartment. I went to a place where they were. They have some dark that the man has like a, he has like a snake. What he will do is he will rent the apartment to you. Then he will send the thing to frighten you. And because when you enter, you give a deposit of at least two months or three months. So you run away from the place actually, and you leave your deposit. Then he puts you again to rent. So that's the way he was making his business. Everyone would try to stay and repeat sick and all of this. So the man, he told my friend he has an apartment. As I come, he was in Togo. As I come, it's not even 100 feet from him. He starts screaming. He said, no, 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 I don't want that one. Not even 100 feet. I don't want. They see. Amen. They know. Mm -hmm. So we, can, we have to stop being psychedelic Christian. You are a spiritual being. Hallelujah. Let your light shine. Hallelujah. Amen. To do this prayer, hallelujah, I want us to be anointed first. Because this is anointing for war. This is an anointing to break the altar. Any evil altar speaking in your life. And you do it for yourself. Amen. I will be doing mine. You repeat what you are breaking. You go to your own place. So each one knows his own place. Hallelujah. So I want you to pray. And know that we are in transaction with heaven. Hallelujah. Can you put the second line? Oh, the one. Mm, no, the one for ministry. I feel used. Be in the spirit of it. You put your armor. Let's put the armor. Put the armor and put the blood all around you. All around you. Put the armor and put the belt of truth. Amor is Ephesians 6, 12 to 18. Belt of truth, breastplate of righteousness. Mm. 
train de chez le fait un maître de transition pour deux choses au fond. Is in the name of Jesus et le soir de spirit et grand pour nous. Papa, papa, cover my self with the Lord. Cover my house with the Lord. Cover my family with the Lord. My husband, myself with the Lord. My children, I say, Ben Joel, grace with the Lord. I cover Carmen with the Lord. Eve with the Lord. Jordan with the Lord. I cover the member of New Beginning Ministry with the Lord. Father, have your way, 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 have your way. Father, as we are going to war against the force of the enemy, the force of the altar, Father, in the name of Jesus, and I will speak it again.